Welcome to Candid Conversation. Today's question is... Can you lose any reward that you gain while on Earth? Can you lose any reward that you gain while on Earth? That's a very good question. Uh, first off, I think when we look in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and it talks about the judgment seat of Christ, uh, a lot of times I think we think of reward in terms of, like say when I go to school. Right? Well, if you get straight A's uh, on your report card, you'll get, uh, I'll take you to Chuck E. Cheese. I don't even know if they exist anymore. Uh, <laughs> I'm showing my age. Um, or, you know, if you, if you get, if you, uh, you know, whatever it is, it's if you, you stay out of trouble, you don't get in trouble at school, then uh, I'll get you uh, a, a video game, or I'll get you whatever toy you wanted, you know, I'll get you a new basketball or something. And, and we think of a reward as something that is, it's a temporary type thing for some performance. That's usually how we think of a reward. But when you read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, so in other words, we think of multiple awards. I remember in school they had uh, every year they would have an end of year award. So you had citizenship awards. And I don't remember what else, but pretty much every kid got at least one or two certificates at the end of the year. And so, uh, a lot of times we think of rewards like that. It's some kind of, it's a certificate, it's a, a toy, or it's some, and, and so you can get these multiple rewards. But when you look at 1 Corinthians 3, it talks about uh, its reward in the singular, not in the plural. So it says that every work, uh, every man's work shall be tried. It doesn't say works, plural, it says works singular. And then it has it tried in the fire to see what work it is. If it's wood, hay, or stubble, it's going to be burned. If it is gold, silver, or precious stones, it will be rewarded. And it talks about a man receiving a reward, or it talks about people who... Uh, suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So it appears that we get, we don't get multiple rewards. We get a reward. And it is a position in heavenly places. So in heavenly places, according to Ephesians 1 and Colossians 1, there are thrones, principalities, powers, mights, dominions, and every name that is named. And so it talks about you either get a reward or you suffer loss there in 1 Corinthians 3 at the judgment seat of Christ. And of course the judgment seat of Christ is only for uh, believers of the body of Christ in this current dispensation. Unbelievers won't be there and believers from Israel's program won't be there. They'll be judged separately because they'll get a reward of a position in, on the earth. We'll get a reward of, of a position in heavenly places. when. Peter asked Jesus, we've forsaken all, what are we going to get? And so it says, in the end, when the, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man become, and he sits on his throne, you sit, will sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now at the same time, he mentions that for those who have given up houses, and father, and mother, and family members, and, and possessions, you will receive everlasting life and a hundredfold in the kingdom. So now for Israel versus us, it's hard to say because I know with Israel, they have a fleshly covenant. And so there are material blessings for them, material rewards. We are told in Ephesians 1, 3 that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. We get a heavenly reward. So do you have um, physical rewards like Israel does, but do you in heavenly places? I would say that that's just part of, not necessarily 
like God's going to say, okay, you did this for me. You were a pastor for 10 years, therefore here's a gold watch. Or you were a Sunday school superintendent for 20 years, here's a set of golf clubs. Uh, I don't think it's going to be like that. The main thing that the judgment seat of Christ does, you get a position in the kingdom. Everybody there as part of the body of Christ, because your life is hid with Christ in God, uh, God sees you as who you are in Christ. If, and most people never understand life in Christ and uh, the faith and the hope and the charity doctrine, they do good to hear, a clear, hear and believe a clear gospel. So most people who are at the judgment seat of Christ are probably going to be in every name that is named. So it's congratulations, you receive everlasting life as a result of trusting in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sin. That is your reward. And the works that you did, they were of the flesh because you didn't get sound doctrine in the inner man, didn't let God's love come through you. And so you suffer loss. You don't get a position of a throne, a principality, a power, a might, or a dominion. But I think that as time goes, I think what we're going to have in heaven, because when you look at the way God made heaven and earth, it was all to be a pattern of a temporal, temporary pattern of what eternity looks like. And so we do have family you know people have kids they have kids and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and father and mother you have all that those family members and in eternity we know from Isaiah 9 and verse 6 and 7 of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end God's government continually increases and so I see that as just like you have on the earth people are born. You have kids. I think that's what's going to happen in heavenly places as well. And that's why um, you know, the increase of his government, there shall be no end. That's why this universe is so big. When you think about how big everything is, the planets, the stars, uh, I mean, this it just keeps going out. No one's ever found the end of the universe. It just keeps going farther and farther. And they say, and I don't know how accurate it is but they say that the universe keeps expanding which is why they have this big bang theory well the reason for all that is because God is going to fill the the reason those planets are there is there will be people on those planets in eternity it'll just keep growing and growing you say well life can't be supported on any other planet but earth right now yes but God can change that around I've heard that in Noah's day, before Noah, there was no rain. I know that from the Bible. Well, you didn't need rain because there was a water vapor canopy. And then after the flood, it seems like there were land masses and there were seas created. The oceans were created. There were big changes that occurred on the earth in Noah's flood. So God can create changes in these other planets to make them inhabitable. And maybe, you know, in heavenly places, the bodies are different. We have glorified bodies. You can fly, you can move around, go from one dimension to another. Maybe uh, the reason for that is because there will be all these other universes and planets and life all over the place. And it will keep growing. So we'll be having kids. Now, uh, Jesus said that in the resurrection, they're not married nor given in marriage. But... And so I think what happens is when you look when God made Adam, this is all of a sudden getting deep. <laughs> when God made Adam, he made him male and female within one body. Genesis 1.26, he made male and female within Adam. Which is a wonderful thing because now you can use the male mind and the female mind together to serve the Lord. But what's bad about it is when sin comes in and the sin nature, now you can use the male and the female mind together to destroy yourself. When in the Tower of Babel in Genesis 10, when the world was united against man, against God, God says, I got to divide them up, create different languages and nations because they will destroy themselves if I don't do so. And the world will get like that again. Basically, 
Satan had got man's depravity so great that the male and female checks and balances and the children family balances didn't keep the sin nature in check anymore. So he had to create a third barrier of nationalism. And look at what's going on today. The male and female barriers are being removed. Having And so when you do that, when you have just girl living with girl and boy living with boy, then you don't have any kids. So then that removes the family barrier. This whole thing, you think, it's so crazy. Why are they doing transgender stuff? And they don't, they, they come up with different genders and they don't know who they are. And they can't, well, the reason for that confusion is that Satan is trying to reverse the checks against the sin nature. And then the final check would be what he added at the Tower of Babel, nationalism, the nations. And, uh, and that's where the Antichrist comes in, one world religion, the WHO, the World Health Organization, they're all about bringing in an, a, a religion of health, you know, and, and so they have peace under the guise of a World Health Organization, and one ruler, eventually the Antichrist, the United Nations and all this, so it removes national barriers. You got AI technology and computers that would remove language barriers. I remember one time went to a Mexican restaurant here in Alabama and the guy was trying to learn English. He knew very little. He worked there and uh, he hit it on his phone, you know, so he would he would speak something into the phone and it would give him the English equivalent and the phone would say it in English and, or vice versa. And so we could communicate that way. Now, of course, it, the technology wasn't that great. It didn't translate over too well. But uh, the point is, is they're getting that, and it's only going to get better, or worse, depending on how you look at it. Uh, and so Satan is trying to remove these national and uh, gender and family barriers against the sin nature so that man will be like at the Tower of Babel. And that's when Jesus said in Matthew 24, if the days of the tribulation period aren't short, great tribulation are not shorted, shortened, then no flesh would be saved. Even the very elect would be deceived. So that's what Satan is working toward. Now, on the other side though, when you are in Christ, when your sin nature is gone and you have a glorified body, it's best not to have those checks because then you don't have the barriers to serving God. The sin nature is the huge barrier. And once that is removed, well, then you can have both male and female in the same body. And it's because that's how God made Adam. That's why Galatians 3 says uh, in the body of Christ, there is neither male nor female. You're all one in Christ. Um, Jesus was created that way. Now, he was definitely a man and looked like a man, but he had the female aspect to him just like Adam did. So you have Jesus as a man going into the temple and giving a cord of whip, uh, making a cord of uh, a cord and whipping the people, the money changers, getting them out of the temple. That's more the male characteristic. And then you also had him at the end saying, uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I would have longed to gather you together as a, as a hen gathers its chickens under his wings, under her wings, and you would not let me. So there's the female characteristic there. The male characteristic and the female, all in one in Jesus. Again, he looks like a man. He is a man, no doubt about that. But he's got those female characteristics in him, just like Adam was a man, no doubt about that. Uh, but he had the female characteristics in him as well. And so in eternity you have that. So children will be born, but not how they are today. How they are today was a different way created the male and the female bodies are different and through sex is how uh, it gets together and you have a child being born and now you have the uh, male and the female in one body and so a child can be born within yourself somehow the labor pains of a woman was due to the as part of the curse of sin Genesis 3 so you're not going to have labor pains anymore. And how all it works, I have no idea. Because we haven't lived in a world like that. Um, you know, do you, would it still take nine months? Would you, uh, you know, would you, would it be all that but just no pains in the end? Or would it be much quicker? 
Uh, is it born differently than having the womb in your body? You know, there's all these types of questions we can ask, and I don't really have the answer to any of them. But, uh... So, but, but the point is that in eternity, you're going to have kids being born and you're going to have what life is like here on earth, except without the curse of sin, without Satan as the God of this world and Christ is the Lord. And then you will live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So all the problems of the sin cursed world are gone. And so the world's going to look a whole lot different. So you're going to have babies being born, children being born, and uh, you know those types of things. And then that's why you have such a huge world that God made. And this is going to be going on Earth too as well. So they're going to have their own planets that they're filling up with newborn, and we're going to have uh, ones in heaven as well. Now, I said all of that to say that, you know, like any growing organization, where I work, the county is the fastest, I think the seventh fastest growing county in the United States. And so we have uh, new schools, more students, and so the greater, we have more work, so now we have more positions available. So initially, maybe you didn't, maybe you're just in every name that is named. Well, eventually, you're working your way up to a principality. Or maybe you were already a principality, and uh, but then you may work yourself up to a throne. You know, in other words, there's going to be room for growth, just like with any company. You you get in most people if they get a job with an organization, ten or twenty years down the road, they if they're still with that organization and doing a good job, they've probably got a promotion, a supervisor or a different job that makes more money. You know, being a lead or. A, senior staff or whatever it is um, you grow with the with the company and so that's how it will be in heavenly places so your reward the question was initially <laughs> um, can you lose any reward that you gain while on earth and I think the the answer to that is you will get a reward of a position in heavenly places you're not going to lose it because if you do anything in the flesh it says basically that's going to be burned at the judgment seat of Christ and it mentions suffering loss but the suffer loss of 1 Corinthians 3 doesn't mean well you were going to get a gold watch and now you don't have it it means you were going to get a a power you're going to be a power in the heavenly places and now you're in every name that is named you lose you don't really lose a reward you lose a position but you don't lose it by doing bad stuff you just don't gain it so it is uh, because of the circumcision of Christ, any sin that you do is not held against you. It's, it's taken away. So you can gain reward as you get sound doctrine in the inner man. Then you've built that up there. And you may say, well, that was years ago and I forgot it. Well, yeah, but it's still in your mind. It's still there. You just don't remember it because you haven't brought it to your mind lately. Or, or maybe there's, due to the curse of sin, there's brain damage or loss there where you don't actually, it's not really in the brain anymore. But um, that's due to the curse of sin. Once the curse of sin is removed, it's still there. So the point is that you will continue to grow in uh, sound doctrine, and then the more you grow in that, then the greater your position will be in heavenly places. The more you apply that doctrine as well. That's another part, because you think of a position like where I work. There may be a certain education level that's required to get a position. And then if you want a higher position, you may need a higher level of education. At the same time, you can't just have the education. You also have to have the experience. You need both education and experience. And that's what God is looking for, or Christ is looking for, when he gives out a position. He's looking for the education, the sound doctrine built up in the inner man from God's word. And he's also looking for the experience of where you've applied it and God's love has come through you. And so the education and experience leads to a position. But if you've just lived in the flesh and you suffer a loss, so you don't get a position, but you're in every name that is named, as the organization grows, 
because another you look at how many people are in the world today about 8 billion well people are dying every day but in heavenly places they wouldn't die unless it's a child that's born and they are rebellious and then after a hundred years they'll die according to Isaiah 65 around verse 21 or so but um, normally most and us will live forever and all those who believe the gospel after us will live forever those children but those who don't will end up uh, rebelling and, and dying after a hundred years but you're gonna have a lot greater growth you think the world's busy now with all the billions of people it's gonna be tremendous growth in heavenly places throughout all eternity and so then um, that's why we have the different planets and everything and so you'll be having kids and I think every man and woman, it's, there's neither male nor female in Christ, you're all one in Christ. And so everybody would be having kids. Exactly how that happens, I have no idea. And uh, you train them up in the things of God. And, you, you know, that, and you'll be over the angels, and the angels will be helping out. And so you got all that, and it'll continue to grow. And as it grows, there will be opportunities for new positions created. And so then those positions will... So if you're in every name that is named, and then you realize, oh wow, I was uh, I was bamboozled by religion, and I thought I was serving God, but I really wasn't. I was just operating in the flesh my entire life. So I'm in every name that is named. Well, have no fear. Jesus Christ is there to educate you. And now, without with the sin nature removed, you will get sound doctrine in the inner man, and you'll get the opportunity to share it. You know, when you have a child. You don't know how to take care of the child. You never had one, but um, you grow in your knowledge of how to take care of a child as the child grows up and you learn with him. Well, so now you've got uh, an opportunity. Uh, you've got your education in God's Word. You've got the experience of the children that you have, and now uh, you apply it. So now you have the opportunity to move up and have a position in heavenly places. Uh, so the answer is... We don't really get rewards, plural, but we get a reward, a position in heavenly places. And it's based upon the sound doctrine in the inner man and God's love coming through you uh, as to the extent you've allowed that to happen um, on this earth. And then in heavenly places, as kids are being born, as the universe expands, as... Um, you read God's word and get more sound doctrine in the inner man. I mean, you could think you think of people like me or Richard Jordan or John Verstegen or you know E.C. Moore, different people, and you think, wow, they sure did get a lot of sound doctrine in the inner man. They sure do know a lot. I'll never know that much. You know what I know is it's not even comparable to what Jesus knows, what people in heaven know, because uh, yeah, maybe I'm more disciplined right now in studying God's word, but. I still have the sin nature. When that sin nature is gone, the ability to grow in God's Word and get that doctrine in the inner man is just unlimited. You can't even fathom how great God's love is because our sin nature keeps it down from displaying, um, not squashing God lo God's love, but it keeps it from being shown. And so when we get to heaven and the sin nature is gone, the every name that is named, people are just going to grow like crazy. All of us will. And so there will be the opportunity then, then to get a reward and uh, to move up. So maybe you didn't get a reward because all you did was operate in the flesh and religion. But that's okay because as long as you made it, you're in every name that is named. You can move up over time. So, uh, but, but if you do things here, you can't lose a reward due to the circumcision of Christ and that any thing that's not a faith is sin and then the sin is cut off or resides in the flesh it never gets to the soul due to the circumcision of Christ so when you're at the judgment seat uh, there is no uh, loss of reward um, it's only I mean you don't lose the reward that you gained in other words if you get enough doctrine in the inner man to be have a be uh, given a power you won't, if you spend 30 years and you don't read your Bible, you don't apply the sound doctrine after 30 years, well, you're still going to be a power. You don't lose it uh, because of the circumcision of Christ. So it's only, we only have um, things to gain and nothing to lose, really. Um, the losing is not using your time to get the sound doctrine in the inner man and apply it, share God's love to others, and so then you won't get as high of a position in heavenly places. So that's possible. 
but if you've already earned a, a position, you're not going to go backwards is the point. All right, thanks for watching.